Hi, and welcome to another special episode. This time I am celebrating 60 episodes. That's right, I have watched 60 werewolf movies so far. So I think this is the perfect time to sit back, take stock, and evaluate the first batch of films. And what better way to do that than a tier ranking video? So that's what this episode is. I'm going to sort every werewolf film released between 1913 and 1979. That's 65 movies, which isn't equal to 60, I know. Let me explain. I did briefly toy with the idea of ranking the first 50 movies I watched for the project. I chose not to uh, for two reasons. First, I want to have a chance to at least acknowledge all the movies that were released, even those I have so far been unable to watch. Perhaps someone watching this will have a lead on where or how I can track one of those films down and I can fill in some gaps. Second, it felt like it would be more useful in the future as a set with future ranking videos by uh, sticking to films in a chronological period. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, ranking werewolf movies, ranking any movies is subjective. And so I decided to avoid the letter grade ranking that you commonly see in these kinds of videos. Instead, I created six tiers to categorize uh, the films based on my perspectives of their quality and impact. Tier one is legendary masterpieces, films that stood the test of time and are considered classics in the werewolf genre. These are the movies that changed all films after them. This is the cream of the crop. Tier two is werewolf classics, werewolf movies I think everyone would enjoy. A guaranteed audience pleaser, just one that didn't quite hit that influential status as a masterpiece. Tier three, Solid entertainers, films that might not be groundbreaking, but offer a satisfying werewolf experience and have a decent following. Werewolf fans will love these and more casual audiences probably will as well. Tier four is your B-movie fun, your cult favorites. These movies might not be critically acclaimed, but they're enjoyable for fans of cheesy, low budget werewolf flicks. Werewolf movies with a dedicated fan base and a unique appeal, even if they're not gonna get mainstream recognition. Tier five is the diehards. These films struggle to be entertaining, fun, or thought provoking. Not everything can be great. Movie making is hard work and these films show how easy it is to fail. These are movies that only a werewolf diehard is gonna track down. Tier six is a special tier. It's unavailable. There are some movies I just could not watch either because they've been destroyed or I couldn't find a way to watch them in a language that I understand. Tier six does not mean a film is bad. I would love to someday empty this tier as I get to watch these shows. I have no opinion on whether these movies are good or bad. Remember, individual preferences vary and a film's placement in these tiers is subjective. Some may enjoy B-movies for their campy charm while others may prioritize critically acclaimed work. As always, please recognize this is just my subjective opinion. I'll bet every single person who watches this video would make at least one decision differently than I did. That's fine. So with all that said, let's get started. Okay, so here we go. We're going to kick it off with The Werewolf from 1913, which unfortunately is a lost film. Can't be seen. And that applies also to The Wolfman from 1923. That's not a great way to start, but that's the history of early cinema for you. Uh, that brings us to Wolf Blood, A Tale of the Forest, which I'm going to throw in the diehard category. I don't think it's that bad, but it is a silent film, and it's not the best silent films out there. There are a lot better silent films that people are going to enjoy, so I threw that into the diehard fan. Um, but the good news is, is this finally brings us to our first legendary masterpiece, Werewolf of London. It sets the stage for werewolf movies for decades. Uh, it's the best transformation on screen for... 40-something years, an absolute masterpiece. Uh, and we follow that up with The Wolfman, which I also consider a legendary masterpiece. The first uh, Lon Chaney Jr., uh, the first Universal uh, horror uh, werewolf, absolute masterpiece. Uh, just fantastic. Uh, that brings us to Cat People, which was released in 1942. And I'm going to throw that in to the solid entertainment uh, category. I think it's good. Uh, I don't know that it's going to really apply to people who aren't into werewolf movies that much, uh, but it is good. Uh, and I would recommend werewolf fans check it out, uh, which brings us to uh, the mad monster, which unfortunately I'm going to throw that into our first uh, B movie fun 
it's not great. Um, if you really, really want to see every werewolf movie, obviously you're going to see it, but I, I don't recommend it. Uh, the Undying Monster, solid entertainer. Uh, definitely uh, a fun older movie. Uh, Frankenstein vs. the Wolfman. This is our second Universal, and it's just, it, it's good. It's great. It's great, in fact. Uh, I call it a classic. Uh, but it's not, it doesn't hit the same highs as the Wolfman. Uh, it's not groundbreaking in the same way. In fact, it's Universal kind of retreading uh, over the same uh, ground as they did before so i can't can't call it a legendary masterpiece certainly do call it a classic that brings us to um the wolf of the malvenor 1943 french movie uh, i would give them credit for accomplishing what they did during the war years but it's not it's not great uh, the print's been damaged um yeah that's that's one for the diehards uh cry of the werewolf goes into the b movie um I thought for a bit about putting it in the diehards, but it's actually slightly better than that. Uh, but it's, it's not one that I would recommend to a casual audience. Uh, House of Frankenstein, unfortunately, continues the slight downward uh, trend in the Universal movies. It's not, I don't think it's as good as Frankenstein uh, meets the Wolfman. Still good, still a solid entertainer, just not the same heights as before. Uh, and I'm going to throw return of the vampire into those werewolf classics. Uh, man, the, I really love the werewolf in this. I love Bela Lugosi as a vampire in this. Uh, this was a real shock. This is one of my first big surprises of the project that I was like, man, that's a really good movie. Uh, highly recommended the return of the vampire, uh, house of Dracula. <sighs> Unfortunately, it just keeps getting you know every every movie is a slightly worse than the one before it this you know we have a great bella lugosa performance in the return of the vampire and then we have whatever it is he's doing in house of dracula i understand what's going on but it's it's not great it's still a uh, b-movie fun it's a cult favorite i understand why people love it it's certainly not down in the diehard category but it's not the best um she wolf of london uh I can see the argument for putting it in werewolf classics, but unfortunately, ultimately there's not a werewolf in it. Um, and you've got to be great to show up in a werewolf classic without a werewolf, um, or much less be a legendary masterpiece. Still, it's a very solid movie, very entertaining, uh, very highly recommended. Uh, the cat man of Paris. Oh, it's definitely down here. I, oh man, I feel like I'm going to throw it in diehards. I, I, I bet some of you might be disagreeing with me, think it maybe should be a little higher than that. Um, I just found it a little silly. Not worth, not worth the effort. Uh, Abbott and Costello absolutely belongs in the classic category. Uh, it's not legendary, uh, but it is absolutely a classic. This is the first film that's really introduced comedy, uh, into the werewolf movie. Um, absolute classic uh both as a werewolf movie lon cheney movie and as an abbott and costello movie uh speaking of abbott and costello uh we now move to ishmael and abdel meet frankenstein and that is falling into the diehard category uh it is a, essentially just a remake of this in in uh, arabic it is not nearly as good <laughs> um so falling into the diehard category uh, then we get to uh, The Werewolf uh, from 1956, and I'm throwing that in the classic category. Again, it doesn't really break new ground, so it doesn't quite make the legendary masterpieces. I've got a pretty high bar for what it takes to get into legendary masterpieces. But The Werewolf is an absolute classic. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it, really recommend it. And that, the same goes for I Was a Teenage Werewolf as well. Um, from the next year, 1957, man, great movie, highly, highly recommended. It's something every werewolf fan, even casual werewolf fans should be aware of. Um, that brings us, however, to the castle of the monsters, um, which uh, the castle of the monsters actually is, I haven't been able to see that's a, I know I've, I've found copies, but I have not been able to find a copy that I can read or listen to in English, no subtitles or dubs. So it falls into the unavailable category. 
um, which I thought was going to be the case for the man and the monster. Uh, but I was able to find a copy uh, dubbed into English and man, I was really, really uh, enjoyed it. Solid entertainer, not quite a classic. There's a few things holding it back, uh, but it's a very, very solid movie. Well worth the uh, time to watch it. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, the same does not hold true of La Casa del Terror. Uh, Lon Chaney's last performance as a werewolf, um, just not, um, not great. Um, unfortunately. Uh, and that brings us to The Curse of the Werewolf. Uh, 1961, and I'm going to throw this into the solid entertainer category. Really enjoyed it. Cool design of the werewolf. Uh, interesting story. Great acting. Not quite a classic. Uh, I don't think you need to see The Curse of the Werewolf to really understand the history of werewolf movies. That's kind of the line that gets you into werewolf classics, but um, a solid entertainer. Uh, werewolf in a girl's dormitory. Absolutely for me falls into the diehard category. I, I can certainly understand and wouldn't argue too hard if somebody wanted to put it in the B movie fun for them. Uh, but I just, I was not a big fan. Uh, face of the screaming werewolf, uh, also falls in there. Uh, for those that know it's essentially, um, a chopped up copy of the, uh, La Casa del Terror put with another movie made worse. In fact, uh, the fact that it made worse means I'm going to bump, uh, La Casa del Terror up. Uh, yeah, that means probably Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory goes up as well. It's it's cheesy. It's it's not great, but it's certainly fun. A uh, good popcorn movie. Um, that brings us to Blue Demon, El Demonio Azul. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find a copy of this in English. Uh, English subtitles or dubs, so it has to go into the unavailable category. Again, La Loba, I thought was going to fall into that category. Um, but I was able to get a copy. Uh, it's a B movie fun, a uh, real cult favorite, not as good as, uh, the man and the monster, at least in my opinion, although they, they share the same director. Um, I think the man and the monster is a better movie. Um, La Loba was certainly B movie fun. Uh, and it has that to recommend it. Um, that brings us to the writer of the skulls, which, uh, is going to go in the unavailable category. Have not been able to find it. Another, Spanish language movie that I can't can't watch because I don't understand Spanish. Uh, La Muertos Panteras, the Panther Women. Um, I'm going to throw that in B movie fun cult favorites. Uh, the makeup wasn't great. Uh, it's not as good as some of the other um, luchador movies I've watched as far as this project goes, but it's it's fun uh, and you'll enjoy it. Mad movie. Uh, um, Mad Monster Party. Uh, I'm going to throw that into the solid entertainment category. Uh, this is a great, it's a movie that you can watch with kids. It's fun. Uh, it's not as good as the other Bankin and Rass. Um, and it certainly doesn't have enough werewolf in it to be a werewolf classic or a legendary masterpiece. Uh, but uh, that brings us to uh, Frankenstein's Bloody Terror. I, is that is that Frankenstein's Bloody Terror? Yeah, that is Frankenstein's Bloody Terror. I am absolutely throwing this uh, in uh, Werewolf Classics. Um, it doesn't really do enough new to get into the legendary masterpieces category, but I f I, there's a part of me that wants to put it up there just because of how important Paul Nashi is to werewolves. It's definitely a classic, definitely very highly uh, recommended. Uh, but it's just, it's just treading too far in the tracks that the Wolfman already laid down. Um, that brings us to Knights of the Wolfman, which uh, I have to put in the unavailable category. I, I pers my personal opinion is it doesn't even really exist. Uh, but other people disagree with me. Um, the Maltese Bippy, I'm throwing in the Die Hards category. That's probably a little harsh. Uh, it's a better movie than many of the other movies that are getting dropped into this category. I just didn't find it that funny. Um, again, I'm sure some of you would put that higher and that's fine. Um, then we get to, uh, uh assignment terror. 
Um, and Assignment Terror, I'm going to throw that in the saw. Well, probably in the B-movie fun. Uh, it's pretty steep drop-off in quality. Uh, one interesting thing about the the El Hombre Lobo series is you'll notice that they kind of bounce around in quality for me. Um, yeah, I think this uh, B-movie fun um, Assignment Terror. Uh, that brings us to uh, Cry of the Banshee uh, next. Uh, and I'm going to put that in the um, Solid Entertainers. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, it's not a classic. The, the werewolf isn't quite good enough to be a classic. But a solid entertaining film. Uh, which brings us to Santo and Blue Demon against the Monsters. Uh, which I found to be a solid, entertaining movie. Um, very fun to watch. Highly recommended. Um, so there you go. Uh, then we have uh, El Bosque del Lobo. And I'm throwing this one in Werewolf Classics. I know that this is probably our first... Uh, yeah, looking over the list. This is our first psychological werewolf that makes the Werewolf Classics. But man, this is a really good character study. Uh, highly recommended Spanish movie. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, that brings us to uh, Ohonam Lobo, which unfortunately I have not been able to uh, track down. So that's too bad. Uh, then we have the Beast of the Yellow Knight. Uh, I, I really got to throw that in the Die Hard category. The makeup is a little rough. Transformations are rough. The story is a little simplistic. Um, I, man, I could, I could make an argument for moving it up, but I'm going to throw it in the diehards. Uh, then we get the werewolf versus the vampire woman. Uh, definitely an improvement over the last El Hombre Lobo movie. Not quite as quite good as, as the, good first, the first, but, but fun, fun uh, uh, entertaining, entertaining and interesting uh, kind of new direction for the plot. Very much liked it. Uh, also in the solid entertainers is Werewolves on Wheels. Uh, our next American movie from 1970, what, two, uh, one, 1971, um, recommended. And it's a solid entertainer. It's not nothing great, nothing spectacular, but it's, it's, it's entertaining. Uh, Dr. Jekyll uh, versus the werewolf also falls into that solid entertainer category. Not a classic, um, but man, fun, interesting, something new. Uh, Paul Nash is trying a different take on, the story by mixing in directly the uh, Dr. Jekyll, Jekyll inspiration. inspiration. Then we have a uh, Dracula prisoner of Frankenstein, 1972. I found this to be really pretty bad. Um, <laughs> so I'm throwing that in the diehards category. Don't, don't bother unless you're, you're dying to do it. Um, then we have next uh, moon of the moon of the wolf. Yes. Moon of the wolf. I think this is our first, well, Mad Monster Party kind of was our first TV movie. Um, but this is uh, really our first TV movie. I'm throwing it in a B-movie fun uh, cult favorite. It's a pretty it's a pretty good-looking movie. Uh, it's a little tame. Um, not a solid entertainer. Certainly not a classic. Um, that brings us uh, up to, um, let's see, The Fury of the Wolfman. Um which probably is a step down for me back into the B movie uh, cult. Um, yeah, probably. I think that's fair. Uh, then we got the rats are coming. The were vampire werewolves are already here. I'm throwing that in the diehards. Uh, God bless Andy Mulligan for all his enthusiasm. I, he did not make a good movie as far as I'm aware, which is why blood is also going to get tossed into the diehard category. Uh, that brings us to uh, Chabello and Pepito versus the monsters. Another one I have not been able to track down. So I got to put it in the unavailable category. Uh, then we get to, um, let's see. The return of the werewolf, which actually What was that called in English? I can't remember. Uh, which probably puts it, <laughs> that I'll tell you something, uh, that it probably goes into the B-movie fun. If I can't, if it doesn't, hasn't made a strong impression on me, 
uh, it's slipping through my um, my brain. Not that great, uh, but not bad enough. Which unfortunately uh, is where Horror of the Wolf falls. Really did not enjoy that. Um, mainly because I just kept getting it. Well, you'll find out why uh, when I release the episode on this movie in a while. Uh, but that's a little teaser for upcoming. Uh, then we got what I consider to be a classic, um, uh, Santo and Blue Demon versus Dracula and the Wolfman. Man, I love this. Um, easily the best Santo and Blue Demon movie I watched. I'm sure they probably do have better ones. But uh, the werewolf is a much, much bigger character, much better. That's why it can jump up into that werewolf classics. Uh, then we got the boy who cried werewolf, and I'm throwing that in the uh, solid entertainer category. I really enjoyed it. Got a lot out of it. Uh, so highly recommended. Uh, then we got the werewolf of Washington. I'm going to throw that in the B movie fun cult favorites. It's not bad. Um, it's not diehard level of bad, but it's not that entertaining either. Um, yeah, definitely a B movie fun. Uh, then we got the beast must die. And I can see an argument for B movie fun. I'm going to throw it in the diehards because uh, I did not enjoy it that much. Uh, then we have another uh, Mexican movie that I have not been able to find a copy in uh, with English subtitles or dubs. Unfortunately, it has to go in the unavailable. Scream of the Wolf would absolutely fall into the solid entertainer category if the print that I had seen was better. So I got to throw it down into, you know, B-movie fun. Um because it just wasn't that great. Uh, oh, and then we got uh, Curse of the Where uh, Curse of the Devil, um, which definitely in Solid Entertainers. There's a part of me that wants to throw it up in Werewolf Classics, but I don't think it quite makes that jump. Um, not quite. Uh, then we have Nazareno Cruz and the Wolf, another one I have not been able to track down or see. Uh, then we've got Night of the, uh, well, in Spanish, Night of the Howling Beast. In English, uh, The Werewolf and the Yeti, um, which absolutely uh, gets a solid entertainer uh, role there. Um, wait, this has got to be... This is, yeah, this got out of order. This is the Night of the Werewolf from 1981, which absolutely is a classic. Uh, yeah, now that I'm remembering, that's got to be that one. Uh, this is the much better remake of um, the old uh, Knights of the uh, Werewolf. Uh, Wolf Guy, B-movie fun. Um, certainly cheesy, certainly fun, certainly action-packed and uh, lots going on. Um, Santo versus the she wolves. I don't, I don't even know. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite even rise to be movie fun for me. Um, man, werewolf woman is one I really, really struggle with. Uh, I'm going to throw in the diehards category. It's not something I think that you should be tracking down unless you're a real, real, real movie werewolf diehard. That said, there are some interesting themes to think about, uh, but maybe maybe just watch the video on it. Um, Death Moon, it's not bad enough to be a diehard, but it's not great either. Definitely falls uh, into the B-movie fun. Uh, and then finally, we got Wolfman, um, which I'm going to throw up into the B-movie cult. Um, man, you can tell... Uh, that I <laughs> have a high bar for legendary masterpieces. Now that I'm sitting here looking at it, oh man, I think I think there probably ought to be some that are a little higher. But I can't like all these feel good to me like as a as a group. So I think I'm going to stop there and say that that's it. That's all of the werewolf movies from 1913 to 1979 uh, please feel free to correct me and tell me what i got wrong so in conclusion if you like lycanthropes like share and subscribe 
Tell me where you would have ranked films differently. Keep your eye on the moon and a silver bolt in the chamber, and we'll see you back here next episode.